What's up guys and girls and welcome to Indie 5. We'll start with a band from, from Florida, United States. These guys obviously don't know what Metal Archives is or maybe they don't know even what Google or other search engines are. This band is called Gnosis and let me tell you they're quite a bit with the band's same name and yet this band was formed only as late as 2013 which makes it my... It makes, it makes it a little weird that like didn't these guys know that this kind of name was already used like a few times? Well, nevertheless, uh, this one is uh, one that plays death metal. Here's the CD, by the way. And then uh, some, you know, jewel case inlay, just black here. And outside, obviously, sorry, uh, we have a track list here. And then we have, obviously, the booklet with the all seeing eye, some demonic hands, and whatnot. Album bought the offering seven. Now, um, Gnosis is like playing old school retro death metal mid tempo and all that. Barely over 30 minutes, including outro and intro, which are like from the school book. Like, you should add some, you know, uh, church bells and then some uh, infant screaming, and you're good to go with some, uh, you know, spell kind of mumbling. And that's what Gnosis is all about. Once you've listened it once, you're just totally aware of everything, what is going on there. It's not bad, but it's not really good either. It's very far from being any any original thing. Uh, I find it a tad bit boring because, to be honest, the riffs are not strong. They are actually very mediocre. The production is really weak for a death metal album. It seems like these guys are demoing a rehearsal tape and it ended up being an album. That's the feeling I'm getting here. Uh, the, the guitar sound is actually just weak and powerless. Uh, the vocals are like a, from a growler, which it seems to me is just trying to learn how to grow properly. Not very strong again, very uh, kind of a, I don't know, like mediocre-ish, even maybe a little bit weaker. And just everything, even the drummer is like, oh, I'm just gonna pound some death metal, you know, this is not very interesting, you know. Oh, very much like why I am listening this on a CD, full length album, rather than as a demo tape. I don't know, but if you're a fan of old school retro death metal with some occult stuff, check it out. It might be your cup of tea. I wouldn't know. Von Helgd might be one of those Swedish death metal names you have totally missed. At least I have done it. Uh, already founded in 2007, this uh, band has put out five albums thus far, uh, this being the latest one called the Deimos Sanctuarium. Um, basically releasing albums every two or three years. This album is very much uh, based on the foundation of Swedish death metal, but with kind of a doomy uh, vibe. Some of the songs are so slow paced that it's not wrong to call this uh, band a doom death or even dark metal band. There are some elements which just could be led both ways. As you can see, some of the lyrics here are in Swedish, some of them are in English. I don't know what's the reasoning uh, behind this, but well, that's the case. Anyways, um, this about 45 minute album is pretty much kind of a basic level of Swedish death metal, if you know what I'm uh, going after. Some melodies which are clearly so Swedish and uh, production so Swedish, once again, it could be kind of a uh, sunlight successor and whatnot, and kind of a rolling vocals which are very, very typical of this kind of music. Now, there's basically nothing wrong with this album, except it actually lacks the kind of a hits which, then again, many bands from Sweden are known. You know, bands like Dismember, Grave, Entombed. So this is basically the same school. The same school of uh, Swedish death metal, just a different generation. And unfortunately, this is not pure gold. While it's easy to listen and kind of easy to enjoy as well, it's one of those albums that leaves very few ideas running around in my head after I'm finished with the album. So, it's not exactly one of those gold standard albums, but then again, not much to be, you know, not, not many reasons to whine about it. It's quite nice, but not the triple A level, as the saying goes. So, if you have missed this band, now it's a good time to check it out. 
I don't know if this is the best or the worst of these five albums, because like I said, I've missed the band previously, but at least now it's on my radar, so why don't you check it out and uh, who knows, maybe you will like it as well. And now we go to Greece, to a band called Sacral Rage. This is all about sci-fi elements with kind of a retro-ish vibes. Well, I don't know, they just spaceship guys with swords and all that stuff. Really cool nerdy stuff, that is, if you are into kind of a sci-fi dystopias, nerdism and whatnot. Uh, the name of the game here is Old School Speed slash heavy metal and uh, well these guys have surely listened to lots of 80s material uh, merciful fate among others is clearly present here and uh, what can i say these guys are not originators these guys are not pioneers second album since the band was formed some 10 years ago being celestial echoes is one of those albums that you probably could have said, yeah, these guys are enthusiastic again and go really high with their vocals and all that stuff, much higher than I can. But to be honest, there's not much quality to be found here. Uh, this is so basic uh, speed heavy metal that I find hard time to actually enjoy it. I mean, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with speed or heavy metal as genre. But when it comes to uh, their music, well, this band is not exactly A quality, it's not even B quality, it's really, really mediocre album with mediocre production, kind of annoying vocals, and really, not a single good riff or song. So to me, this is kind of like recycling center of uh, speed heavy metal. And to kind of underline the pain, the last track is something like 15 minutes. Come on, guys, if you're not able to create even five minute good song. What about 15 minutes? Uh, clearly for the biggest enthusiasts out there and nobody else. Not totally bad, but really not worth your time. Next to last will be a German band called Hammer King. Now this is not a very old band, but it's been active and uh, there has been a couple of albums prior to this one called Poseidon Will carry us home. As you see, naval themes with this kind of heavy metal reminds me of a little bit of Running Wild and I guess that is not purely a coincidence, both being German heavy metal bands. Uh, it's a glimpse to the lyrics as well as the general layout of the album. Now, Hammer King is not exactly most innovative, original or unique kind of a band. Uh, very uh, kind of a general, uninspiring and uh, to kind of a mediocre way of creating heavy metal. It's not like the production is bad or the vocalist maybe not that filled with passion and maybe a little bit too high-pitched for its own good, but I don't know, this is lacking some muscles, some pirate ships, some swords and dragons, I don't know. It's, it's not like this is German version of Man of War. This is not related to uh, uh, British heavy metal. Uh, this is just some German stuff, which is quite okay, but I mean, who will settle for okay stuff? You really, really have to be a uh, German heavy metal fanatic and also uh, kind of in, into this kind of a pirate, naval, whatever thing to get this one make your fluids going on and pound your fist and all that stuff. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's kind of a useless, if you get my drift. If don't, well, doesn't matter. Because the worst one is also the last one. Usually the saying goes, Le last but not least, but this is the least. One of the crappiest album I've heard the entire year. Let's welcome Australian band Road Warrior with the debut power. Um. Well, first of all, let's start with the cover. It's horrible. Uh, seems like this could be drawn by some, I don't know, 70 years old kid who has watched a little bit too much Mad Max, the second movie, which is called Road Warrior. And um, at least when, it's, when it comes to the promotional seed of the album, this uh, particular movie has inspired the band. 
nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's great classic 80s road action movie. I love how young Mel Gibson kicks ass and there's lots of cool violence, if any, um, and all that. But but this album is, is just kind of a horrible. First, let's start, start with this. The guys can clearly play. I mean, they know the instruments back and forth. That's a given. Um, these guys also know how to sing. Well, the vocalist anyway, who's also the bass player, the animal or something. Kind of animal meets the animal. Oh, what a awesome word to play. But the music, it's not like these guys can't play. Like I said, then the production is pretty decent and the vocalist kind of shows that he has skill and, you know, to change pitch and all that stuff. But when it comes to the act actual charisma of the vocalist, it's just zero. It's it's really horrible. It feels like he's singing without any kind of passion and, you know, as if he's just, you know, trying to scare the kids off this album. Uh, I don't know what to say, really. I mean, it seems like he's deaf to his own uh, songwriting and compositions. It's just something that really bothers me. But the worst of this album is not even the vocal work, but the actual riffs and the compositions, you know, how do you know, like, decide which riffs are gonna go after which ones, how you just, you know, put them together so that the songs actually make a little sense, get the flow and groove going on. And this album has very little any kind of flow, any kind of grooviness, it's just non-existent. And also most of the riffs are just like plain weird. It's as if a kind of a general heavy metal band tried to go progressive and they're going without some weird ideas which simply don't sound good. I mean, it's like, guys, don't you hear what you're doing? This is horrible. It's really horrible. I mean, with this kind of talent, these guys clearly have with their, you know, instruments, they should be creating at least average riffs, you know, kind of like, okay, like the, the Hammer King over there. But this is just like, guys, this don't make any sense. Get a producer or something who has ears in it, you know, on his head or something. I mean, this is just like awkward kind of a heavy metal. I find it crappy and I was just happy to get it reviewed and like gone. Luckily, it's only 35 minutes, so you don't have to suffer that many many hours to just kind of finish it, giving a few more listens. But I mean, like, don't even go there. Some probably have the feeling that now they have to click open that Bandcamp page. So do what you will. Uh, but to me, it's horrible. Horrible. Oh, anyway, this is it. The Indie 5 this time. See you soon and bye-bye.